Hi, this is Dave Farina from CosmosSafari.com. Have you ever wondered how to find M20, the Triffid Nebula? In today's episode of our Deep Sky with Dave Messier Marathon series, I will walk you through my four-step method for finding this amazing summertime celestial wonder. This video is brought to you in part by OPT Telescopes, a world leader in telescopes and accessories. Click my affiliate link in the description below to help Cosmos Safari's mission to bring the universe closer than you think. M20, the Triffid Nebula, also known as NGC 6514, is an unusual combination of various types of deep sky object located in the constellation of Sagittarius the Archer. At a distance of 4,100 light years, M20 was first discovered by Charles Messier on June 5, 1764. Its common name, Triffid, reflects the appearance of three distinct lobes of the object, including an open cluster of stars, combined with a pink emission nebula or H2 region, and a blue reflection nebula. The brightness and complexity of M20 makes it one of the most amazing examples of star-forming regions in the entire sky. At an apparent angular size of 28 arc minutes, or about 0.47 degrees, M20, the Triffid Nebula, is actually very large in the sky. That's almost equal to the size of the full moon. At a magnitude of 6.3, M20 is bright enough to be observed with the naked eye from dark skies, and is one of the best targets for binoculars and telescopes. Due to the high sensitivity of cameras compared to the human eye, astrophotography can be conducted on this object even from light polluted areas, especially when combined with light pollution or narrowband filters. As always, large diameter optics will provide the best results by increasing the light gathering power and resolving power. With this object, however, it's important to make sure you keep the focal length of your optics low enough to see the entire object within your field of view. Step one, find a starting asterism or constellation. At my location in the Northeast US, we will start our observation by locating the teapot asterism as it rises in the southeastern sky just after sunset starting in late June and early July. The teapot asterism is part of the constellation Sagittarius and is made up of many of the constellation's brightest stars. Throughout the summer, the teapot will move westward as time progresses towards the fall. However, Due to the shortening of days and nighttime coming earlier each month, the teapot remains in the evening sky throughout the summer and into the fall, and sets just after sunset in the southwestern sky by early to mid-November. Step 2. Find the object using star hopping. We're going to use the stars of the teapot to help us to find M20, the Triffid Nebula. Starting at the teapot, we first need to identify some of the major component stars of this important asterism. The teapot itself is made up of four stars oriented in a trapezoid shape. These stars are Phi Sagittarii, Caus Meridionalis, Caus Australialis, and Acella. The teapot's handle creates a second trapezoid on the eastern side of the main pot and is composed of two more stars, Tau Sagittarii and Nunki. On the western side of the pot, the star Al Nazal creates a right triangle with Caus Meridionalis and Caus Australialis. The teapot's lid is created with the addition of the final star, Caus Borealis, creating a triangle with Phi Sagittarii and Caus Meridionalis. In order to find M20, the Triffid Nebula, Draw an imaginary line between the two stars of the teapot's lid, starting with Phi Sagittarii and continuing through Caus Borealis. If you own a Telrad finder scope, you will notice that the distance between these two stars is just over 4 degrees, approximately the width of the Telrad's reticle. If you do not own a Telrad, you can use your hand as a basic measurement tool. The distance between these two stars should be slightly less than the width of three fingers held at arm's length. 
continue the line approximately one and a half times the distance between these two stars. If visible, you can use the star 1 Sagittarii to estimate your way towards M20. When using hand measurement, I would simply do a visual approximation of one and a half times the distance between Phi Sagittarii and Caus Borealis and move on to step three. Using a telrad, the distance to one Sagittarii would be approximately the width of your reticle, about four degrees. Move the reticle again, causing one Sagittarii to move from the western or right side of the reticle to the eastern or left side of your reticle. Either of these methods should place M20 nicely in the field of view of your finder scope. Step three, move your eye to the magnified finder. At this point, you should have M20, the Triffid Nebula, in your magnified finder scope. In dark skies, M20 should be easily visible even in a 50 millimeter or larger finder scope or a pair of binoculars. It will appear as a wispy cotton ball-like object. Center M20 in your finder scope. Step four, move your eye to your widest field eyepiece. Always start your observations at your widest field eyepiece. For this simulation, I've chosen my 100 degree apparent field of view, Stellar View Optimus 20 millimeter eyepiece on my Stellar View SVX 130T Premier Apochromatic Refractor. Center your object in the field of view and slowly work your way down to smaller and smaller focal length eyepieces, centering each one until you get the desired field of view for your setup. Short focal length telescopes and long focal length eyepieces work best on this object due to its very large angular size. Thank you so much for watching today's episode of Deep Sky with Dave. This is part of my Messier Marathon series of videos in which I plan to go through all 110 Messier objects. If you find this video helpful, please consider liking this video and subscribe to the channel. And click the notification bell if you want to find out each time I upload a new video. If you have a different method for finding M20, the Triffid Nebula, want to provide me with feedback on this video, have suggestions or requests for future videos, or if you have any other questions regarding my star hopping techniques, observational astronomy, telescopes, or astrophotography, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you from Dave Farina here at CosmosSafari.com. Clear skies.